So what we're gonna do today is set a toilet. We've got the tools, the toilet, got the opening. We've got PEX crimpers, PEX cutters, wrench, nut driver, crescent wrench, tubing cutters, and pipe dough. Gerber is my choice of toilets. I really prefer them. I don't ever have any callbacks with them. They are kind of a builder's grade. It is a really good flushing toilet. And that's really the most important thing in a toilet, isn't it? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the water off to the house so that we can cut this line and put this valve on it. All right, so what we've done is we've turned the water off to the house. I've opened up some other valves to help drain the water down into a sink down in the basement. So we won't have a whole lot of water pouring out here but I do expect to get a few drips out of there. We'll see what happens. Looky there. I guess the vacuum down into the basement worked. Grab my PEX crimpers next, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna put on is this escutcheon. What I do first is I'll put it on backwards. What that'll do is that'll scrape all the paint off and it'll make it easier for it to go all the way back to the wall. So. There's that, and then we put this on like so, put that all the way up against the wall, and we slide this on there, this is your Pex crimp ring, put that on there, and then our valve, and then what we're going to do is we're going to crimp this. Now what I want you to see here is we want this gap. We want that to be around one eighth of an inch. We don't want to be too far this way. We don't want to be too far this way. We put the valve in, slide this up here where we want it. We're going to take this tool, open it up. We're going to put this tool around there, just like that. Okay, let it close in. We check our depth on it. Make sure our valve is pushed all the way in. And then this is a two-hander, just give it a squeeze, and the squeeze that crimps that pipe, that crimps that ring around that pipe tight. So we have a Johnny ring here, and uh, it's made by Hercules, which I really like their wax rings. You know, I guess it's all a matter of preference and those kinds of things, but I think they do a good job with their wax ring. They give you a set of bolts with it, we want to take this out, okay, and now you might start to get a little sewer smell, but that's normal because you don't have your trap on. Your trap is actually built into the toilet, which you'll, you actually see them in the sides of the toilet. So we're going to take that out, and if you have a brand new installation, sometimes you'll have a plug here built in, and that's for the purpose of air testing it and keeping debris out of the lines. Before we put that wax ring on, we're going to set these bolts. So, just open up the plastic. There they are, you got a bunch of washers, plastic washers, things like that. Now these plastic washers, you can use them. What you do is you just slide your bolt in underneath that. I actually prefer these two marks, these two notches in the ring as opposed to these. You can take this plastic ring and just slide it over the top here just like that and you're ready to set it. Or you can do this. Since you have all these washers and bolts, I turn them upside down. I put the beveled side down is because it'll actually go a little bit lower and that way we don't run into hitting the bottom rim of the toilet. So stick that on just like that. And it doesn't have to be super tight. Just give it a little turn. There, it's solid. It's not going to go anywhere. We're going to take this. We're going to set this right there. Now, my flange was fairly clean. Sometimes you want to take a scraper and 
clean those flanges off. That way you don't have any leaks underneath your wax or anything like that. So if we pull it out of the box, move the box aside, okay? And we're gonna take this. You got a hole like this on both sides, okay? So a hole like that. So we wanna line those holes up with those bolts on the flange. And I'm gonna eyeball it, go down slow, and there, now I'm on. Before you push this thing down and seat it, you wanna make sure it's where you want it. Just kinda shimmy it down until it hits the floor. Just a little bit. You will also need a utility knife. That. That's all that's used for. So you got two holes right here, okay? That's where your tank bolts go. We're gonna go ahead and put that together before I go back to the tank bowl. These tank bolts don't have a nut on this side. So, what we do is we reach in and we just stick those, stick those through just like that. And normally on your Gerber toilets that you get, you're going to have one of these and you're going to tighten this down on here. That's what you would do with your standard Gerber toilet today. We're gonna stick these on. So you got one each on each side. So we're gonna take this one. This one goes above this one. You may think that's obvious, but I have seen a lot of toilets where they'll do just that. Or they'll do this only. Now, it's good that they have a plastic washer on there, but the, the nut usually pulls through the plastic washer. So the purpose of the metal washer is to keep that from happening. Also, do not do that and put a nut on it. Do not do that because one of the purposes of the plastic washer is to keep from cracking porcelain. You don't want to crack the porcelain. Okay, so we do that. And again, I'm putting it upside down. It doesn't have to be, but what I do, when, the reason I do that is because it makes this washer line up directly underneath it so that it's centered on the washer. It helps center it on this plastic washer also. So in here, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to tighten just a little bit. Not a whole lot right now. I want to get the other side on first. One of the reasons I like the nut driver is because you can kind of feel it. Whereas with a wrench, you could actually, because you're usually turning out here, gives you a lot more torque to turn that. And then I'll back up a little and I'll just give the bowl a wiggle. Just give it a wiggle to see if it's solid. These bolts right here are usually a little too tall for these to go on. Okay, for these to pop on. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut those off. What I use is a grinder. That's what the grinder is for. So we're going to use this grinder. I recommend a metal cutting blade. Now we take that, we just pop that on and it's on. <laughs> 